We're back here at the Tulsa Arms Show with some special editions of the Curator's Corners. I'm here with Jim Sapika, director of the NRA National Firearms Museum. Jim, we're starting out with a great display you brought with you from the National Firearms Museum in Fairfax. Real guns of real heroes, law enforcement guns. Tell us what we have right here. We have a gun from the What Were They Thinking file. I love that file. I know, I know. The gun itself is, is uh, Smith & Wesson Model 10. It's a continuation of the uh, Smith & Wesson 38 military and police that they introduced in 1899 and has been the workhorse of the Smith & Wesson line since then. Introduced the K-frame revolver, the 38 special cartridge, the uh, dominant police sidearm of the 20th century. Now that's easily recognizable. That's easy to recognize. The other part, even before we got on camera, we had some guys saying, what, what is, is that? that and what were <laughs> what did they have in mind somebody thought it would be a great idea to put the police billy club on the front of the revolver and what we have here is a police billy club bored through the center so you can shoot through it while it's attached wow that fits onto the muzzle of the uh, revolver like a bayonet oh, and man. uh this this <laughs> wonderful device was uh it's marked the Automatic Screw Company out of California, patent okay. date 1919. So, so they got a patent of, on that. Yeah, oh, wouldn't for you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wouldn't want anybody stealing that idea. But it's uh, it's basically just a billy club, mounts onto the gun, and uh, this would give modern police administrators fits. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, it's an incredibly impractical device. It renders the, uh, uh, the billy club or uh, police batons today, you'd want to hold like that. Mm -hmm. When you're holding them like that, it's an incredibly awkward yeah. grip. And of course, uh, uh, when you think about continuum of force today in, in modern law enforcement, you want to use appropriate force to the measure. You, you want to use a, a, a baton when that's appropriate. You only want lethal force involved when that is appropriate. And here, you're, you're whacking somebody, and it probably holding it by the trigger, too, so that when right. you whack them, the, bullet will go off and go somewhere else. Right. But uh, probably needless to say, this never caught on. I've, I have not seen another one. No. Most, uh, most experienced uh, gun collectors, Smith & Wesson collectors, have not seen one. But it, uh, it was uh, another dead end, in uh, many dead ends in, in law enforcement and firearms design. But uh, eventually, uh, ideas come out of things like this. I say probably something, Jim, that looked great on paper. And then we went to design, it got a patent, and, and then you're going, okay, I'm thinking, how would you, I mean, do you shoot first, then hit, or hit, or, I mean, what would you, yeah, what would yeah, you even do yeah, with that yeah. thing? No, it's, it's a bad idea all the way. It makes a handy uh, handle for somebody to grab it if you're trying to hold somebody at gunpoint. There are just so many wrong, things wrong so, with this. It's I just hard to, uh, hard to enumerate them all. But uh, uh, there it is. Somebody it, thought it was a good idea. I said, but it makes it another great treasure for the National Firearms Museum it and does. for this exa it does. Uh, for this display you brought, which is great because it, it is. It's very visually striking. When I saw it yesterday, I'm like, Jim, what is that? It's totally striking. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Jim, thank you so much for uh, bringing us this uh, What Were They Thinking edition here at the Curator's Corner. Uh, back here at the Tulsa Arms Show, we got more to go, more real guns of real heroes for law enforcement guns. Then we're going to get into some other things here at the Tulsa Arms Show. So we're, we're just getting warmed up. So thank you, Jim, for being with us. Thanks, John. Always enjoy it.